Hello and welcome to the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along, Machine Quilting with Rulers. In this week's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to machine quilt with cutout rulers, one of my favorites, because you can create so many designs and effects simply with one shape. You might find these types of rulers a little easier since there's more room to hold onto it. Look for a ruler that has a shape or shapes that you wanna quilt. It's as simple as that. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be using Taj and Sid, two of my cutout rulers. But just remember, any of the designs that I'm showing you can be done with any kind of cutout. I'm gonna show you how to go in all different directions for a meander. We'll learn how to line them up for a border design and go all the way around to create some motifs. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a sewing machine and a long arm, let's get to it. First ruler I'll be working with is Taj and we're gonna be using it to go in all different directions to create a meander. I'm gonna hold it down with both of my hands and quilt along the inside of that ruler, returning to my starting point. Well, I have my first shape and I need to quilt another one, but if I rotate it from here, I'm gonna start spinning in a circle, which is what we want when we're quilting motifs, but we're not there yet. So what I'm gonna do is leave the ruler in position and backtrack along my previously quilted line for about a half inch or so. I'm gonna reposition my ruler and see which direction I wanna head. So maybe I'm gonna go this way. Once I decide it's perfect, I'm gonna press down the ruler and sew along the inside. leaving the ruler in place, backing up a little bit, and then repositioning the ruler again. Now, since I'm quilting a meander, I want them to go in all different directions, just like I would any other meander I'd quilt. So I'm gonna be really intentional about varying the directions I'm heading. Don't let the traveling trip you up. If you leave the ruler in place, it'll be no sweat and I'm trying to fill in that area as completely as possible. I wanna make sure that there's no big gaps left behind. So I'm quilting all those shapes so that they're nice and close to each other. But sometimes it's not gonna quite work out like that. You might not have enough room for the shape or maybe you need to turn direction really fast. So let me show you how to work through that. Let's pretend I wanna fill in this area right here. I can tell it's gonna overlap my seam. I want it to stay nice and in that block. I can reposition, keeping it all within the space I wanna quilt, or I could just quilt the portion that fits inside the area. So pretending I wanna go this way, I can simply quilt until I hit the seam and then back right up. I also have to remember that there's about a quarter of an inch in between the needle and the edge of my foot. So if my ruler does overlap the area by less than a quarter of an inch, it's gonna be fine because it will still fall within that space. So in this particular example, I'm running into two different sides. This one looks close, but it's gonna be fine because it's within a quarter inch. When I hit this one, instead of backing up, I'm gonna travel along it and then continue up the other side of the ruler. So now I've hit that edge. I'm just gonna take a few stitches over and then continue along the other side. back up and then reposition. I definitely wanna make sure that I have good control of this ruler so at any point I can stop and reposition my hands. Now here's my rule of thumb when it comes to leaving gaps in the quilting. If I have a gap that's smaller than the design itself, I think it's fine. If that drives you crazy, you can actually use free motion quilting to go fill it in. Now sometimes you'll run into the edge of the area, sometimes you'll run into another design. I'm gonna handle them the exact same way I would the edge of the area. I'm gonna quilt until I run into it, back up, and move along. Now that we've seen how to go in all different directions, let's create a border design. And it just so happens it perfectly fits the panel I designed for this challenge. Now I can use the reference lines to make sure that's aiming down the center, and then I'm gonna quilt along the inside, returning to my starting point. Now I'm gonna travel along the line, just like I did with the meander, except this time I'm gonna travel a little bit further, all the way up to the third reference line. I'm gonna slide the ruler directly in the direction I'm heading. That means I'm not gonna start back at my starting point again, I'm gonna start just a little offset. This is important, because this is gonna make the leaves look like they're laying on top of each other. And I'm gonna quilt along the ruler, but I'm gonna stop when I hit that previously quilted line. I'm gonna back up to that same reference point, just on the other side. Once that's done, I'm gonna slide it in the direction I'm heading and then continue along. Now there's a lot of different variations you can do with this design. So right now I'm quilting them so that they don't overlap. I'm stopping at that previously quilted line. But if I wanted a little bit more texture to the design, I could keep on going so that they overlap. I'm gonna quilt along the inside of the ruler, returning to my starting point. I'm still gonna travel to that same reference line and continue on. 
this would work really well with a circle cutout ruler or if you're wanting to add a little bit more density with your quilting. Now we know when quilting borders, it's all fun and games until it's time to turn the corner. So let's talk through that. The trick to remember is I'm not even gonna consider the next direction until I've crossed over into the corner. Starting too soon will leave you a big unquilted area in that outer corner and we don't really want that. But now that my leaf shape has crossed into that corner, it's time to change direction. I'm gonna travel along and get pretty far along my shape, reposition the ruler and turn that direction. The most important thing here is that I wanna fill in as much area as possible and then turn that corner. Slide the ruler in the direction I'm heading and continue on. And you're just gonna keep going until that whole area is filled in. And like it always seems to happen, I have just about an inch left, but we know how to handle that, right? I'm gonna position the ruler, quilt along it, travel along the edge, and then get back. So whether you quilt your shapes so that they overlap, that they're spaced out or close together, Using cutout rulers to quilt your borders is gonna be a fun way to play with the arrangement. Now here we're being intentional about the placement and being very rigid, but we could be a little bit more free flowing, a little bit more organic. And I'll do this one on the long arm. I wanna quilt my shapes in this area so that it kind of wraps around like this. Then I'm gonna quilt my shapes so that they fall on that line. The main difference is that I can only have one hand on the ruler. So that means I'm really gonna to have to take my time and reposition my hand as needed and travel along the shape just enough so I can reposition and have my next one fall on that line. It doesn't have to fall perfectly on the line, I just want to follow that basic direction. Of course, you don't have to mark out the line before starting. You can just kind of follow whatever your own flow is. Being directional with the placement of those leaves will help it highlight different areas. For instance, if I wanted to wrap around a block to help highlight it or to move your eye to a different area of the quilt. Now, once I have that main line quilted, I could add some different filler around it or echo it to really show it off. You don't have to use rulers over the whole quilt. I love being able to switch in between rulers and free motion quilting to create different effects. And just because I'm quilting teeny tiny pebbles doesn't mean that you have to do the same. Any filler would look great in this area. Or if you randomly want to throw in a petal here and there, that would be fun too. Since I don't have to break thread in between the ruler and free motion quilting, I can easily add those little petals in amongst other designs. It's just a fun way to add a pop of texture to your quilts. Not all cutout rulers make the same shape over and over again. Sometimes you can reposition it to create different effects. That's definitely the case with my SID ruler. One way to use this cutout ruler is for stitching in the ditch. Place the foot inside the slot and I'm gonna use the reference lines on the ruler to make sure it stays nice and straight. Now, one thing that has been a little confusing for some quilters is the fact that there's wiggle room. It's not a perfect fit. Well, that's because if it was a perfect fit, you wouldn't be able to move along the ruler. So when I'm quilting along it, the first thing I'm gonna decide is what side of the ruler I wanna hug along. So here, I wanna hug the left side, knowing that if I tend to veer off the other way, I'll have that other guideline to keep me on track. Repositioning often. Seams aren't always perfectly straight, especially if I have pieced them. So repositioning and making sure the line sticks to the seam will have a much better effect. Since it's a cutout, I can hold it on both sides and that's gonna give me more control. This may be especially helpful for newer quilters or if you're a little timid about stitching in the ditch. I designed this other portion to create a starburst. It's really fun, let me show you how to do it. So once I've positioned it exactly where I want it to go, I'm gonna quilt along that center except this time I'm gonna go all the way to the end. Now once I hit the edge, it's time to make that little starburst. So keeping it in place, I'm gonna quilt to the left, backtrack, and quilt to the right, backtrack. Keeping the ruler in place, we'll make sure those lines stay right on top of each other. Now I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees and line up those reference lines with the previously quilted lines. That's gonna give me my first part of my X. I'm gonna hug along the edge right here and do the same thing, quilt along it and back. I'm gonna do the other side of my X, right? So now I'm gonna turn it the other way, 45 degrees, line up those reference lines on the previous quilting and do the same thing. So basically I've quilted a horizontal line and an X. Now I can go on to my next one. I'm gonna reposition my ruler, go all the way back to the starting point and repeat that. This will help me give the starburst consistent spacing without having to measure it. it makes things so much easier.
but now we're getting to the corner. I'm gonna turn this corner a little bit differently. I'm gonna imagine that I have a diagonal line that goes from the inner corner to the outer corner. Once my quilting hits that imaginary line, I'm gonna stop and change direction. I'm not even worrying about it till I get there. And I'm just gonna turn my ruler. These reference lines will help make sure it stays even to the quilt, and then I can continue on. Again, remembering I'm hugging one side of the ruler and trusting that the other side will be there should I need it. Quilting these starbursts is something that you don't have to have a ruler for. If you feel comfortable, you can just freehand those lines. However, if you want them to be consistently spaced and all the same size, the ruler will definitely help you do that. If you want to do this as an all over, or maybe fill in a border that's a little bit bigger, quilting multiple rows is really easy. The only thing I'm going to do is space out my starburst so that they're offset a little bit. So I'm going to quilt a little bit. Now I can kind of reposition the ruler and make sure that it's kind of falling in between the previously quilted ones. Again, don't worry too much about this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Offsetting them just allows me to get the lines a little bit closer to each other. Here's the good news. If this seems like a lot to remember, don't worry. I put together some downloadable quilting diagrams that will show you exactly how to do this design. All you have to do to get them is to like the video. Okay, actually you don't have to like the video, but I would like if you liked it. To find the actual diagrams, just check out the description box below. And even if the starbursts aren't perfectly placed or not perfectly quilted, it's still gonna be a gorgeous design that will give your quilt a geometric look quickly and easily. Now, let's talk about using cutouts to make motifs. I'm gonna go big and put my motif in the very center of my quilt. But since I'm working with a Taj ruler, which is just a little smaller, it's not gonna quite fit this whole area. So I'm gonna use a straight edge ruler to shrink the area down just a bit and then quilt my motif in there. It's as simple as connecting the dots on the quilt. Basically, I'm just using the quilting to make a smaller square inside a bigger square. And since I know I really wanna show off this motif, I'm gonna add another line of echoing and then get to the motif. A motif is just taking a shape and rotating it around a center point. So using the reference line to make sure that it's pointing straight up, I'm gonna quilt along the ruler until I get back to the starting point. Now once I get to that point, I'm gonna turn my ruler completely around 180 degrees and quilt the next one facing away from it. Now I'll quilt them horizontally. Now depending on the shape of the ruler that you're using, your lines might overlap or they might not. Whether it does or it doesn't, it's totally fine. And I have my first four pretty petals. And I could stop here, but I think what I'm gonna do is quilt some that go in between them. The reason I didn't start at the top and work my way all the way around is I wanna use those first lines kind of as my guideline. If my horizontal and vertical lines are off just a bit, I can smooth it out by splitting the difference with the next row. So this time I'm gonna aim that line so it's coming directly between these two petals even if it's not the perfect 45 degree angle. Again, auditioning, making sure that's coming directly out from between those two and quilting along. Now this is gonna have a lot of thread buildup in the center, so using a thread color that blends in will be very helpful. I'm using this beautiful peppermint colored thread so you can really see what I'm doing, but if you bought the coordinating thread collection, I would use the light gray aluminum color thread in this area. And there we have our pretty motif. Now this is not the last time we're gonna see these. We'll actually see them next week when we talk about points. But for now, let's take this to the long arm and I'm gonna show you how you can do a partial motif in the corners. I'm gonna quilt my motif so that all the lines come back to this corner. I'm gonna use traveling to get from one to the other. And I'm gonna slide in my ruler. I'm gonna quilt half of the shape to get to that corner. And then one that goes out at an angle. Again, this is where those reference lines are gonna come in really handy. It's gonna help me make sure Let's go in the direction I want it to go. And then the next one going on this direction. Once I have my cute mini motif, I can travel on to the next corner and do the same. And I can repeat working my way around all four corners. It's a fun way to break up the shape and use it in some different ways. We sure have covered a lot. Now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel designed for this challenge, fill in the areas highlighted in red with the designs of your choice. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions by leaving them in the comments. I try to check back in every once in a while, see how y'all are doing. And I'll be back next week when we talk about quilting beautiful points with pointy rulers. Until then, happy quilting.